Hi, welcome to Den and Denim, the channel where we explore Levi's vintage clothing and denim history. I'm Dan. Thanks for watching. This is going to be a freeform video talking about the Durango Festival and the hundred thousand dollar pair of 1873 Levi's jeans, amongst a few other things. And then we'll get into some other upcoming Levi's news and channel news later in the video. But this weekend was a huge thing for the denim vintage community. The Durango Vintage Festivus in New Mexico was held and the oldest pair of Levi's jeans was sold. This went for a hundred grand. Now this is far below its estimate of 150 to 300,000. Once you add in taxes and insurance and the 15% that buyer's premium for the event, your hotel for getting to the event, all this stuff, it's about 200 grand for this pair of jeans. So when it goes back on the auction block, maybe in our lifetimes, next 40 years or something, you figure it will fetch over a million dollars. Now the question is, why did it go for below the amount? And also we'll take a, a look at it. Now I think this went for below the amount because this isn't the only pair of 1873s or slash 1874s that exist. And maybe there's more to come. Maybe there's a lot more to come. But just looking at some of the pictures of these. Now we know this is 1873 because it has unbranded rivets. There's no arcuate. And you can see that there's no rivets on the back cinch. I have to say, this is a much more together piece than the nine rivets. I like to call this one eight rivets because it's missing one of the rivets on the watch pocket. It has these wonderful patches on there. You see the reddish hues, which could come from the dirt, from brick, from iron oxidizing. A lot of the buttons look rusted. They would have rusted into nothingness, but copper still retains. You've got this beautiful green patina on it that is just the most gorgeous. I mean, just wonderful. Really just kind of made this video so we can look at these pictures if you haven't seen them. And just really marvelous piece. It'll be held in a private collection. Probably won't be able to see it. It's wonderful. You can see that they're the stitching from the patch. It was a centered patch. You see the fuzzly wuzzlies or unrefined seam cuts there. There's little strands of denim that the tailor thought was fine to leave in there and it adds a little bit of softness to it. Denim pockets. Gorgeous denim pockets. Wonderful. They just hold up in such good condition and you get to see what a lot of the fabric kind of looked like from the pockets not being exposed to so many elements. There's that selvage. You know, I did a big discussion about washing jeans or not washing jeans. I think I'm on the side of not washing, but I like to put in the sun to let the UV light kill off the germs. If you want to talk, but if you cuff up your selvage, then definitely take a toothbrush or some kind of wire brush and brush your selvage line with some soap. Make sure that's clean and bright. And there it is. That's the rivet. That's where it all started. Okay, so enough about this particular item. There was a lot of other really cool things going on here. Something more in my price range is a pair of overalls. Very early, uh, my wife rolls around in her custom, in her recreated pairs of these. But it's just the lower half. You can see the bib and brace is no longer there. 
still just a wonderful example of a hundred year old item that you could stitch up and have as a wearable garment, but I think you'd really just want to frame this, have it as a piece just to exhibit. <clears throat> Here is a very old example. Here's an old example of duck pants. And we can see one, some of their more natural colors. 12 grand for duck pants this old, that's, that's well within range. Not for me, but we can see there's no more buttons left. All the buttons just fell off. You can barely even see the stitch holes from it. A good old stumpy there. Now, if we can get a look at that cinch, you can see that early 1870s, because there's no rivets on the back cinch. Can't tell if there was an arcuate or not. Yep, there was an arcuate. You can see those. Then arcuate lines way up at the top there. Wow. It's possible the rivets just fell off of there, but it looks like there was something. Could just be a mark. Wonderful example of that. Now, apparently the orangeness, brownness that we're seeing from duck might not have actually been dyed. There might have been no dye in this, and this might have just been made with an unrefined cotton. Cotton in its natural color is supposed to be more of a brownish hue. Kind of like whole wheat. Bread and the cotton are the same thing. Yeah, no rivets in the back of that cinch, so I'm guessing this is actually 1874 or 5. There were some other finds going on there. Oh, let's check out this blanket line that's still going on. Oh, type three. And cute blanket lining. All right, so I think that's enough for the Durango Festival. Some items that sold. I know that Denim Seeker was looking at this really cool shirt. I didn't see where that was. Nineteen twenties for under three grand. Amazing. Some number twos. Lot past. Oh. Two thousand dollars for canvas pants, not necessarily Levi's. Some Lees for ten thousand. Just wonderful examples that I would also love to just throw into the videos here. Now, as far as these 1873s, I've got the pair of 150th anniversary Levi's ones, and I am so thrilled about that. DZ Thy, just again, thank you, Darren. But Bowery Blue is making these. It's Japanese denim made in Brooklyn. Same specs, although it won't have the gusset. The gusset probably didn't exist on 1873s. Probably only the duck pants from the time. And they stamped Bowery Blue on the rivets. Other than that, I mean, they're, they're darker. They could still be natural indigo dye, just a little more added to it. Beautiful cinch already poked for you and filed down. And yeah, it's a beautiful piece. I think they're all custom made. And yes, you can see that there's a singer number two right here being made with a machine just like the ones that would have made the first pair. Amazing stuff. Here's my uh, den and denim, den underscore in, den underscore denim, LVC. I post to my Instagram when I do new episodes so that you can stay ahead of it, comment. I do the uh, other talk about it there to keep up with the channel. But yeah, I'm still trying to make videos at least once a month, maybe twice a month, and finish up the 501 story. We've finished all of the Double X episodes now with the 1879 last one. I'm jumping into spring bottom pants. And then we're finished with the 19th century. Do 1901s, 1906, some 201s, and roll through the 20th century.
As far as what's new with Levi's vintage clothing and what items you can get, well, there's now some of the classic years, 1947, 1937, I believe too, 54, 55, and 66 are in these organic uh, rints. They are called one rints. You can find them in Japan and also in the European sites. They're not rigid. They are not shrink to fit. But if you're looking for that still style like that, there's something available at the moment. Uh, 1890s that are in Japan only, a little darker than the ones previously made, but at least a, a rigid indigo. And Japan's pretty much sold out of a lot of last season's vintage stuff. Some other sites are still having some things. If we look on the U.S. site, it's whatever they have left over from, you know, if you're, make sure it says shrink to fit and rigid. Those two are the phrases you needed to say if you want shrink to fit. Otherwise, they're got what they got from the last season and just not on sale or it's out of stock. I'm looking for what they have in Poland and the other European sites. And this is where it gets a little confusing. I will say one good word of what they're doing is there's a couple shirts, a longhorn and a shorthorn shirt, both denim shirts, not shrink to fit, but still an indigo. They've kind of just mashed a bunch of made in Japan with my vintage section. So you have to scroll through it. But we've got these two shirts here, 54 longhorn. I don't really consider this part of the canon when we talk about the years. And I don't know how much I'll be talking about these ones. But you've got a your choice of it. Denim shirts, snap buttons. It's okay. You know, it's something for the people who want a vintage style. Otherwise, throughout Europe, you can find these type 1, type 2 and 3, made in China made in Bangladesh or China, and it's just that style of it. This is definitely a, a World War II S506 style Type 1, but it's not part of the vintage canon. And something good I can say is that you buy this, it's not a collector's item, you can wear it, and you don't have to feel like you're destroying a piece of history or something that's one of a kind and they'll never make again. It'll still have some resale value, but yeah, being made in those countries, not so good. In the U.S. and throughout Europe, you'll still see some rigid items that, you know, go ahead and buy those up. As long as they're the Levi's vintage clothing, they're going to retain their resale value. The line is so far done for. I've heard the rumors of Best of Red Tab, and I've heard... There's something made in the USA next year. I'm going to be doing a video covering their eco options. So if we look for, there's the Indigo Farm. We got a pair of those. Uh, they are shrink to fit. I'll be covering the hemp salvage denim and the recycled, along with some organic cottons. Plant-based is the future. Recycled is the future, blah, blah, blah. I'm Dan, thanks for watching. This has just been a short rambling video. Thanks to my Patreon members. I'll be working on the spring bottom pants. That episode should be out within the next couple weeks. Love your jeans.